Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. We got a great show tonight. This has been a fantastic week. And the news in the last 48 hours, the news in the last 10 hours, out of sight. Things are happening. And they're happening primarily with coronavirus, which is probably the number one item we should be interested in in this country today. We've got a lot of important things happening, but the virus is the most important thing, in my opinion, at the moment. And all, and what we're going to be talking about, we're going to go to Africa, by the way, tonight, too, also. We're going to be in Albany, New York, Florida, Texas, Africa, Tokyo, the Netherlands, and Italy. Great show, so let me get started. I never get to finish my shows, but uh, someday I will. I doubt it's going to be tonight. Uh, things have been happening uh, in, with regard to Texas Governor Abbott today. Uh, and with some other judges, places, and things. And I'm going to go through these items right now. What I am going to share with you now is for real breaking news. It just happened 10 hours ago, all right? And it concerns Texas. You know, they, they, the, the Democratic Assembly persons left Texas 30 days ago to avoid a quorum so the Republicans could not vote to pass uh, this legislation that's going to limit people's rights to vote. Smart move, brilliant move. And they went up to Washington, and they've been beating on uh, Congress and sent the Senate to help them, and they're making progress. Well, some of them have started returning home, and there's no, no legislative session going on at the present time, so there's nothing they have to go to, and there's no way they can be arrested, because under the law, they can be arrested and forced to go to a legislative hearing up until 10 hours ago. So now Governor Abbott, and he's a first-class fool and nut, uh, only this, but he's the second-worst governor in the country. Uh, the first is ours here in Florida, DeSantis. But he brought a lawsuit, okay, and wanted... He and his Republican Senate brought a law scoop, suit uh, and said that they wanted to arrest. They wanted to arrest these Democrats who were failing to come to the chamber for a hearing. Well, there's no hearings now, but the governor can call one right away, just like that, because he's the governor. All right, what's happened is this. He went to court. He, being the governor, went to court uh, about a week ago and said, I want the power to arrest. If they don't show up, they have a legislative responsibility to perform by going to the chamber. And the judge at the trial level disagreed with him. He agreed with the dissident Democrats who left the state. Well, the governor appealed, and they had a quick appeal, and the the appellate court made their decision today. And here's the decision. This is such a bullshit, excuse me, decision. I can't believe it. It's a... Decision. This court, by the way, was six judges, all Republicans. Uh, the the uh, decision has no effect in the force. Listen to what the court said. The court said uh, the Democrats can be, if they are within the confines of the state of Texas, can be approached by authorities, police. Now, but that's because the Texas legislature, the Texas appellate court has no power outside of Texas. Once you read the Texas, reach the Texas border, they're done. They don't have any power. And as long as these people stay out of, sight, out of Texas, they can't force these Democrats to come to a, uh, a, Congress, a legislative hearing. But the sixth panel judge also said, here's where they were doing a political favor, and they watered it down totally. They can be approached by the police. The police can ask them to come to the chamber. If they don't want to come, the police have no authority to arrest them. They cannot be arrested. I'm laughing already. Uh, They can't be handcuffed. They can't be forced to go anywhere or do anything they don't want to do. (laughs) So what is – he took a beating today, Abbott. He makes it sound like a victory. It was only 10 hours ago. No victory because there's no – really real power to arrest there to force these people into a chamber uh another thing that's going on here is a 
it's a um, this is a, another court in uh, the state of Texas, and we have another issue with uh, with Governor Abbott. Uh, he issued last week a re- an executive order uh, saying that uh, he was banning, okay, masks in the schools. He banned masks in the schools. Well, a county, it's called Bay, Bay Jar, Bay Park County, took it to court and said, you can't do that. These kids are going to get sick. We know what we're doing. They submitted uh, medical proof. It would be injurious to the children. Uh, And school starting there is starting here in Florida now. And the judge, the judge, isn't this amazing? He granted the relief the Bezier County wanted. He gave them a temporary restraining order against Abbott's executive order banning masks in the schools. Masks could not be mandated in the schools. Now they can. The judge says your order's no good, Abbott. Okay. Uh, Well, there'll be another court hearing this case next week, another appellate court, uh, next Monday, a week from yesterday. Okay. And this is a big deal for the children of the county. Okay. Uh, Let's stay in Texas with Governor Abbott. He's against the vaccine also. The state of Texas, their beds, every bed in the state of Texas, in every hospital, is full. Not all coronavirus cases, but the IC units weren't sufficient to take the IC, all of the coronavirus infected people. So they had to use other rooms, other beds, other floors, hallways. And there isn't one hospital in Texas now that can take in any more. They won't take any more coronavirus cases because they have absolutely no room. So Abbott is starting to contact and has contacted out-of-state hospitals. Isn't this wild? Saying, give us a hand. We want to ship some of our coronavirus patients to you. There's been no reaction yet to the request. I don't know if they're going to be successful uh, but we shall see. Now, let's talk about Key West, Little Key West. Uh, we have a hospital, Keys, Lower Keys Medical Center, Lower Keys Medical Center. It's a good little hospital. It's bigger than a little hospital, but it's a little hospital. Anyhow, the hospital is totally full, totally full. More coronavirus cases than it can hold. This is breaking news. This hasn't even hit the papers. This is another, one of my sub- people here in town uh, that are in the know confront- shared this information with me today. No visitors will be allowed in the hospital from a couple hours ago unless under special circumstance because they're not just keeping them in ICU. they got coronavirus patients all over the place. And anyone who visits could very well get the virus. So we're in trouble, just like they are in Texas, here in Key West, Florida. And I'm not surprised, and I'm not surprised if this spreads, what's happening here in Key West spreads throughout the state. Now, moving on. Cuomo, Mario Cuomo. Uh, I want to say poor not Mario, I'm sorry, that was his dad. I knew his dad, by the way. I, I don't know the present governor, Andrew. But uh, poor Andrew Cuomo. He announced today that he is resigning in 10 days. Uh, I have taken the position in the last three or four days writing about this thing since it's bro- broke that, my God, the world's coming in on him, and everybody's reacting quickly. He has absolutely no friends, even Democrats. And the women want to kill him. Even the Democrats want to kill him, the males. Uh, this poor guy's got nobody. Now, he's for 12 years, he's been considered a hard-ass governor. But he gets things done. Look how he handled the coronavirus thing. All right? Great numbers. Did it. Did it. Did it. Worst city in the nation, okay? Most coronavirus cases. He controlled it. He controlled it. 
So I'm saying, slow down, folks. That's what I've been saying. Slow down. Give him an opportunity to respond. Uh, give him an opportunity to do something. Uh, in the meantime, his state assembly, who has the power to impeach, impeach in New York, is in the process of doing the necessary to impeach him. And it's a democratic assembly. I still said even this morning, I can't understand how the whole world is caving in on this guy. Because from what I read, I don't think what he did is that bad. I'll be frank, I'm going to get so many negative comments tomorrow. I don't think it's that bad. He didn't throw a woman on the ground and rape them. He touched when he shouldn't have touched. Only once did he go inside somebody's clothes, but he never went beyond the bra. Uh, He runs his finger up and down a woman's spine with clothes on. He talks a little dirty, maybe, or suggestive would be a better term. Does this warrant him being impeached? I know it's against the law, but our law has changed over the years and made this stuff to be considered repulsive. And it is. You shouldn't do it. It's against the law. But he did it. And how many people do that today? And women do it to men, by the way. Be surprised. Women do that to men frequently. Uh, And I felt bad for him. Well, he announced today he's resigning. And that's sort of an acknowledgement of guilt. And it's an acknowledgement of guilt. Uh, We'll hear more about this, but I do feel sorry for the man. Uh, The women are going to yell and scream, why should you feel sorry for him? Uh, But I do because he's been a good governor. I know New York. I practiced law there for 47 years. He's done some amazing things in 12 years that even his Democratic predecessor governors could not accomplish. All right? So now the man will resign. He'll go on to whatever his life's going to be. The first thing I would do is go to Europe for three or four months and just enjoy myself and relax. Uh, But be that as it may, my condolences are with him. You know, the only two instances, this is quick. I mean, this thing just broke, what, last week or within the last 10 days? And he's going to resign in 10 days. And I was thinking, where else did something happen this fast? Well, Remember this, Jesus came in to, was it Nazareth, on Holy Thursday evening for the Last Supper. He was arrested that night. He was crucified the next day on Friday. He rose from the dead on Sunday. Within 24 hours, less than 24 hours, this guy was arrested, tortured, beaten, sentenced to death, crucified. And then there's Mussolini. Uh, they captured him, the partisans. He was uh, he almost made it out of Italy, he and his, his mistress. And they killed him. Then they took his body to Milan, and they hung he, him, he, and his mistress uh, from a pole at a gas station. In fact, I've been to Milan, I've seen the pole, and where, where he was done in. He was already dead. But mobs of people. They shot bullets into the already dead bodies. They spit on them. They hit them with clubs, the both of them. And that happened fast. That happened in about 24 hours he got killed. Uh, it took 48 to get hung on the, on the uh, gas station pole. Not the same things we're talking about here, but rapid situations. And this is what happened to Cuomo. But I don't recall anything in modern times, our times, I'm not talking about World War II in the last 20, 30, 40 years, anything happening this fast. Uh, And with this issue that was wrong, shouldn't have done it, but he did it. What he did wasn't that terrible. He should have had the opportunity to go the whole route. But how can you fight when everybody's against you? You have no one on your side, and that's what happened here. I think it's a bad result, but who knows? I don't know. I'm very confused on this because I think it's wrong to handle these things this way. Men are not getting due process in these situations. All I'm saying, men are not getting due process, not the way the ball game should be played. Okay, now, uh, where am I here? Hold on a second. I've got so much tonight. Uh, Let me... Reading the last few days about Cuomo, we're talking about sex. And the sex, really, that he exercised, performed on these women, was really petting. Remember, those of you that are very old used to go out in a car, 
You and the girl used to nag. You used to touch on the outside of her clothes. In my time, you couldn't go underneath her blouse or anyplace else. Uh, and you were lucky if you just got the touch on the outside. But there was no actual sex ever. And uh, very, very interesting. Now, there was another petting time that I was not aware of. I seem to learn as I go along. I, I get a kick and I research it. And I came across something. I was researching for something else. And it had to do with petting. And really, what Cuomo just lost his job over is petting. And I'll bet you that every one of the ladies, not trying to be insulting, had petted themselves, okay, uh, in different circumstances, in different places. And maybe in many instances, perhaps in all, didn't want it done, didn't know what to do, just as we had here. Okay. And nobody threw their boyfriends in jail or anything else. Back in the 1920s and the 1930s, petting. P-E-T-T-I-N-G, was a big deal in this country. They had petting parties, not swinging parties, not orgies, but petting parties. The flappers, we read about them, you know. They, they used to go to nightclubs. They would go to private clubs. they go to people's homes. And this is how the petting took place. This is for real, honest to God. Nobody undressed. The women would go in, and they would go from one man to another. Uh, I have a story here, but it's rather long. I, can't, I don't want to eat up the time anymore, and I have already tonight. But the girl, the woman, would go from one man to another, and she would touch the man outside his clothes, touch his penis, touch his chest, grab his ass outside of his clothes. The men could not touch back. And this was the sexual mores of the 20s and 30s, my friends. And how many of us have e even heard about that? Uh, it, that's, this is for real, trust me. Uh, it was just something. That's the way they, they did it back then. And it was the women becoming women. You know, like a man becomes a man. Uh, they started coming out of being reserved, and this was their way of showing that they had moved a few steps ahead when it came to something like sex. But note, they got the satisfaction, perhaps the men did, but only they could do the touching, no clothes off. All right, let's see what I do here, my notes. All right, bear with me, there's so much tonight, so, so much. Now, Moving on here, I'm going now to my, I've already used 17 minutes, my God. Um, Florida. No, no. Father Thomas Reese. Father Thomas Reese is just a priest. He writes a weekly article for, for N, uh, the National uh, Catholic Reporter, NCR, National Catholic Reporter. What an article he wrote this past week. I would never heard of the guy. I read, by the way, the National Catholic Report. I don't read, read every article, but I skim through it because I'm a Catholic. I'm interested in what's happening. I don't agree with the bishops. I don't agree with half the priests in the church. I don't agree with pedophilia. Uh, I don't agree with this bullshit that the politician like Biden can't take communion because he supports a, right, a woman's right to choose. And Reese thinks the way I do, and occasionally you like to read what people have to say who agree with you. And the title of his article was COVID-19 Global Warning, Warming rather, and Diminishing Catholic Guilt. Now I'm going to read to you quickly three comments from his article because they, they can explain it better than I did. Three paragraphs I picked up. Millions of us are going about our business worrying about our daily lives while Catholic bishops and elites argue about the Latin Mass, all right, communion for politicians, and grinder rather than the coming climate apocalypse. Another one. There was a time the church's hierarchy was able to issue thunderous edicts and most Catholics would follow the instructions of these, the directions of these edicts uh, very loyally, very religiously, because if they did not, they knew what would happen. They would feel guilty and fear going to hell. 
we don't have that anymore. People don't think that way. Uh, this wasn't that long ago, by the way. We go back to the 30s, even World War II, this stuff played. And the last paragraph I picked up, nothing would give me more illicit pleasure than having the governors of Florida and Texas, I'm going to repeat it, nothing would give me more illicit pleasure than having the governors of Florida and Texas, along with the leaders of the oil and coal industry, excommunicated, all right, just as beings, just as beings and nobles, no, just as kings, I can't read my handwriting sometimes, just as kings and nobles were excommunicated in the past. I'm glad there is a priest somewhere in this country that disagrees with what the bishops are trying to do. Uh, now, Florida. Florida is the epicenter of the coronavirus epidemic in the United States. Florida is now number one in cases. Isn't that wild? We are numero uno. Uh, wonderful. I hope our governor thinks it's wonderful. He's doing nothing to help. He's doing everything to add to those numbers. He's against masks. He's against kids wearing them in school. Uh, he's against mandating vaccines. Uh, he's against social distancing. Uh, but he took the shots. Okay, he got vaccinated. Anyhow, it, it makes me ask the question, how many will die because of this? How many will suffer days in a very scary, scary situation in a hospital bed fighting to breathe, okay, to breathe one last time in order to live one more second? And that's because we're not, we haven't been following the protections the CDC had laid down for months here because he doesn't like it, our governor. He wants to be president. He's another Donald Trump. And for months I've been saying, even before he got involved in this stuff, I've been saying uh, he's just as stupid as Donald Trump. He's an ignoramus, and he's going to be worse for this country than Trump, I think, before he gets done, if he gets elected president, as he wants in 2024. Now, also, to show you how bad things are here in Florida, and I want you to understand this also, my friends. I self-quarantined for 412 days, if you recall. Uh, then, you know, about two months ago, they said, well, it's okay now. You don't have to wear your mask. You can go out. And I started going out. I went out about five or six times, only because mentally I didn't seem to want to leave my house anymore, a story unto itself. But anyhow, I'm back into quarantine. This is my 20th day in self-quarantine. Uh, because it's terrible down here. And wait till I finish telling you these stories. I don't know if I told you this one. Uh, did I mention tonight already about the hospital, the Key West Hospital that won't let anyone in unless they are there? I, I think I did. It was in the beginning. The, our, our hospital here in Key West closed down. No visitors. They're there to take people. They can't take any more because every room's filled. The halls are being filled. They have too many coronavirus cases. No visitors. Uh, they don't want it to spread. They don't want it to spread. Uh, now, Florida, uh, last week, for three consecutive days in the state of Florida, we had a total over a three-day period of 50,997 new coronavirus cases. It was the highest three-day period for the state of Florida to have that many cases in 18 months. Thank you, Governor DeSantis, again. Uh, and Florida, not just in Key West, is having trouble with hospital beds, okay? Because what's happening is the beds are filling up. About 10% throughout the state are children now, okay? And school opens Thursday in the state of Florida, and if they don't wear masks, and I think in the, between the next 40 hours, masks are going to be used, people don't care. People don't care. Governor says no. They say yes. The governor said he's going to fine. He's going to fine the boards of education and school leaders if they permit kids to wear a mask in class. This guy's nuts. Uh, anyhow, uh, the hospitals are getting filled up. No room at the inn in many of them. Which now brings me 
tour. I'm still with coronavirus, my friends. I'm st- and I'm with this Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott again. Uh, if I were in the military, and this was the Spanish-American War, and they were Teddy Roosevelt, I would not follow Teddy Roosevelt up that hill. Because no way would I follow these two incompetents. I believe they're cowards at heart. Okay, they talk good, but they don't play the game for themselves. They're cowards at heart, and I wouldn't trust them. They're just not good leaders. Their judgment is bad. Their judgment to lead, et cetera, et cetera, is bad. And I think what they're doing with vaccinations and mask wearing and social distancing, being against all these things, which we have found to be saviors, uh, is they're driving people in the state into the mouth of a fire-blowing dragon. I know that's dramatic, but that's the only thing I could think of, a fire-blowing dramatic. And then what, the, what do these two guys say? Because they're very proud of themselves, DeSantis and Abbott. They think the country agrees with them, by the way. Uh, they remind me of little Jack Horner, remember? They're both sitting in a corner, in separate corners, in separate places, and they both have a hand mirror in their hand, and they're looking into the hand mirror and saying, what a good boy am I. What a good boy am I. That's why they put their thumb in the mouth afterwards. Okay, let's see, where am I here? I'm close to running out. i got four minutes, my friends. Uh, you live, oh, we, 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 we. Judge Howell, Judge Howell, Judge Howell in Washington, D.C., she finally came up with something I agree with. I'm sorry to put it that way. It doesn't sound right. Defendants who were insurrectionists January 6th are pleading guilty. Some of them are pleading guilty, not that many. And they're lower level, their participation in the event. Now, this past yesterday, Monday, okay, uh, in Washington before Judge Howell, a uh, this fellow wanted to plead guilty. The sentence is not predetermined. It's up to judge to decide the sentence. But the prosecution was recommending that the everybody's got to pay a low restitution for the problem, and that the defendants totally had agreed had agreed to put together $1.5 million to help repair the damage to the Capitol. Well, the judge says, that's terrific, but explain something to me. The estimate is really $500 million. You'll all agree, but the bad guys here, the insurrectionists who did the damage, are only going to pay $1.5 million of that. That's not fair to the taxpayers. And, you know, you got to pay the penalty. You do the crime, you do the time, or you pay for it. And she was upset, and she didn't do anything. We're going to talk about this again next week. And also, also, she said, what is this stuff here? We've got, you're letting people plead to misdemeanors, giving them for a sentence a fine, a slap on the wrist, a nothing, okay? At the same time, you're telling me that the, this defendant and that defendant were insurrectionists who, and I quote, were terrorizing members of Congress. Terrorizing members of Congress. How can you let them get away with that? And so lightly, a slap on the wrist. All right, my friends, that's the show for tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the next point I would have told you, we got a hurricane coming, Fred, but we'll worry about that next week because it's not supposed to hit till next Tuesday. Uh, I, uh, what can I tell you? Such is tonight's show. I'm, I'm glad you joined me again. I love doing the show, and I love that you people read it. And more, the numbers are great. More and more people read it every week. I smile, not laugh when I say that. And all I can say to you is thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing me with your friends. And good night.